Hi there, Eve here. So happy to uh, celebrate the holidays with you and I have a special video uh, that I'm so excited to share with you. And you know, what inspired this uh, video is the email responses you guys sent me a few weeks ago. Uh, many of you responded to the, um, the questionnaire that I had sent out for the program I'm making. And you know, it was just so inspiring to read your questions. And as I was reading to reading the questions, you know, the idea of food autonomy kept on coming up. I mean, you didn't ask about food autonomy, but the answer to a lot of your questions was learning how to eat autonomously. So no matter what is going on. So let me let me first uh, define this for you. Well, let me first take a step back and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Eve and I love helping people make peace with food in any situation no matter what is happening in their lives. And if you if you watch my channel, I invite you to subscribe so you could get notifications of every new video that comes out. And today what I'm talking about is food autonomy. So first let's take a step back and I want to define the word autonomy. Autonomy means a person's ability to act on their values and interests. A person's ability to act on their values and interests. So to me, food autonomy means the capacity to decide for yourself what, when, and how much to eat regardless of your environment. I'll say that again. Food autonomy or eating autonomy, to me, it means the capacity to decide for yourself what, when and how much to eat regardless of your environment. Now the environment part, now that part's interesting because when we reflect on this, turns out there's an external environment, like the things people might be saying about food, the way other people are eating, or if people are pressuring you to eat, or if people are making comments about their bodies, or if people are making comments about your bodies. And there's also the internal environment, you know, how attuned you are to your own body, if you're criticizing your body, if you're trying to change the shape or size of your body, how much you've bought into these cultural ideals. These types of things can make it very hard to have eating autonomy. Now, when you don't have food autonomy, this can be really hard because it may be very tempting to undereat at times. You know, follow rules, go on diets, do what your friends are doing, listen to what your family members are telling you to do. So there's that tendency to want to go on a program or try something that somebody else is doing. Also, when you don't have food autonomy, this is challenging because you may also overeat. Because you may eat just because somebody else is eating or because you don't want to be rude and you want to participate. You might also overeat because you might be out of touch with your body or because you might be thinking, I'm done with these diets, forget it, I'm going to just eat everything. And to me, the hardest part of not having food autonomy is just being out of touch with yourself. It could, feel, it could feel very scary to not have that attunement with yourself. It's unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen with food. And the rules are always changing depending on the environment, who's around, what other people are saying, what other people are doing. On the other hand, when you have food autonomy, it's awesome. It's really great. You know, when you have food autonomy, there is no on the diet, off the diet, on the program, off the program, being good, being bad. I think you get the idea. Because when you have food autonomy, you're consistently making food choices that feel good to your body. So there's no beating yourself up because you're learning how to listen to your body. And this is a lifelong process. So I love food autonomy because there's no getting mad at yourself because you're learning your body. And some examples like of what you could relate it to is like, you know, if you try on a shoe and the shoe doesn't fit you, you don't get mad at yourself. No, the only way to, f to find out whether or not the shoe works is to try it on. Same thing with nail polish. If you buy a nail polish and it doesn't match the tone of your skin, you don't get mad at yourself. You just learn that that color is not right for you. Or if you go to a movie that you didn't like, you don't get mad at yourself for watching that movie. The only way to find out is to watch it. Or if you're on a date and you don't have chemistry with somebody, you don't get mad at yourself. You have to go on that date to find out. I mean, I could go on and on with these examples, but it's very interesting because when it comes to food, we don't give ourselves the same grace. Now the way to cultivate food autonomy, I have five steps for you here. Step number one is to get quiet. 
get still. So this may mean going into another room or to be in a private space to really get quiet. The second step is to listen. Listen to the signals of your body. What is your body trying to tell you? The third step is to be open to what your body is trying to communicate to you. Don't make it wrong. Really listen and when you listen, there might be that tendency to try to change your body's mind or, you know, to navigate around it. And in my Foundations of Food Freedom coaching pro, uh, group coaching program, I'll share it with that with you at the end of this video, I'm actually going to give you tools so you have the confidence to listen to your body and to follow through in what it's trying to tell you. Which brings us to, to step number four is act on what your body is guiding you to do or not do. And if you make that choice and it doesn't feel right, that's okay. That's step number five. You could assess whether or not that decision feels right for you and you could go ahead and continue. Or if it doesn't feel right, you could reassess and stop making that choice. So what I want to do is give you some actual real life examples of what this may look like using the weekend that I just had. So example number one is... I was making last minute plans with my friend and while we were making plans I was actually eating a meal and she wanted to go out to eat but I wasn't hungry so I suggested that we take a walk around the mall and that's exactly what we did. We walked around the mall, we enjoyed the holiday, the holiday lights and the decorations, it was really wonderful and when I did want something I actually went and I got something. Another example of how I was autonomous this weekend is when I arrived, I was invited to my friend's house for her um, housewarming party. And when I arrived there, I was under the impression that there was going to be food everywhere and there wasn't. And I was very hungry. So when I got there, I actually shared with the hosts and hostess that I'm hungry. Can we start preparing the food? And that's exactly what we did. And it was really neat because it was fun to help them prepare the food. And it, it turns out it wasn't just me who was hungry. Another time this weekend that I got to experiment with being autonomous with food is when I was meeting somebody for dinner. And by the time we met up, neither of us were really hungry. So what we ended up doing is actually making our reservations for later on in that evening when we actually were hungry and that fit much better. And finally, just this weekend, one night I was up really late and I mean really late, like two, three in the morning and I got hungry again. And instead of my mind's voice telling me not to eat or it shouldn't be eating, I listened to my body and I went ahead and I got something to eat. I hope those examples were helpful. I hope this video was helpful in helping you find food autonomy. If you want more support with this, if this sounds like something that you want to know how to do, I invite you to scroll below. There's going to be a link to the Foundations of Food Freedom program that I'm offering starting in January. It's a 12-week program. There are 10 modules. There's a Q&A session. It meets once a week. Um, the session is an hour and a half to two hours. Every call is going to be recorded. So if you can't join us because you're in a different time zone, that's fine. The calls are going to be recorded and you could download them and keep these tools forever. So there's so much to, to learn. I have the links to everything below. If you have more questions, there's also a link to ask me questions. And I hope this video was helpful. As always, leave your comments and questions below. Give me a thumbs up and happy eating. Bye. Thank you.